Well, former President Donald Trump is expected to appear in federal court in D.C. on Thursday to answer charges about his role in the January 6th insurrection. An indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. This latest indictment comes just three weeks before the first Republican presidential debate, which will take place in Milwaukee on August 23rd. Joining us this morning to weigh in on the indictment is Congressman Jamal Bowen. Good morning, Congressman. Thanks so much for joining us this Wednesday morning. We want to say yesterday's indictment places the former president right at the center of a conspiracy to spread lies about the election, but it stops short of really accusing him of inciting a riot. What do you make of all of this? Hopefully, this is one step closer to justice and accountability. Um, ever since Donald Trump lost the 2020 election, he's been spreading a big lie that many people have seen this big lie uh, play out publicly in front of them. But when you read the indictment, you're almost blown away by the audacity of his behavior between uh, Election Day 2020 and January 6, 2021. I mean, we're talking about a president who, you know, asked for a recount, which is his right. Uh, it was taken up. He lost the recount. It was taken up by the Supreme Court in those states. He lost that. But then he organized officials in seven states to act as fraudulent electors in those states uh, and asked them to call the election in his favor in those states and then send it to Vice President Pence. Uh, this was all fraudulent, uh, and this was all a lie. And unfortunately, officials in those states went along with it, many unwillingly, apparently. So we'll see if additional indictments come down. So uh, Donald Trump is one of the most dangerous people in our country because all of his behaviors led to the insurrection on January 6th, and I think the indictment lays that out pretty well. Well, President Trump did take to Truth Social, right, before the indictment was unsealed yesterday. He referred to special counsel Jack Smith as a deranged and interfering with the 2024 election. Uh, you've obviously been very uh, disappointed with the Republican response to these charges, uh, the Republicans saying it's a witch hunt, uh, them agreeing with Donald Trump that uh, it's an effort to interfere with the 2024 election. What do you think about all of those claims, sir? You know, it's it's scary because the American people, uh, many of us, remain confused about what is the truth and what is not true. And, you know, Republicans continue to claim witch hunt while the evidence is completely stacked against them as far as so-called witch hunt is concerned. I want to also commend the January 6th committee that really peeled back all of the layers that led up to the insurrection. And I'm very proud to be a member of the Congressional Black Caucus. That committee was chaired uh, by CBC Chairman Thompson, and it provided very publicly uh, what happened uh, in front of the scenes and behind the scenes leading up to January 6th. So Democrats, I'm proud, are in Congress trying to do the work of the American people. Republicans, because they can't win on ideas, they do not have a vision for our country outside of what uh, MAGA extremism is all about. They continue to say that it's a witch hunt, uh, which is not based in any fact. Listen, the former president, as you know, has had three indictments. With each one, it seems like his platform grows, right, to speak to his audience. And he's currently the front runner here. So what's the Democratic response to all of this? You know, we have to continue to do our job, and we have to continue to celebrate what Democrats have done uh, during the first couple of years of the Biden administration. We passed uh, three bipartisan pieces of legislation, the Inflation Reduction Act, the Chips and Science Act, and the Safer Communities Act. Uh, into law. That is going to bring trillions of dollars of resources into our communities, not just to fi fix roads, bridges, and tunnels, but to respond to school safety issues and the mental health crisis that's impacting so many of our kids. And we also passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which is going to cap insulin costs at $34 a month and make 
much needed investments in the climate catastrophe that we are in. And finally, we passed the American Rescue Plan, which got shots into arms, reopened our schools, and kept the economy from tanking. And we're now in the middle of a Bidenomics resurgence. So uh, that's what Democrats have done, and that's what Biden has done. And if we had Republican support, we would have done more, like universal child care, universal pre-K, uh, investments in affordable housing, which we desperately need, on and on and on. So, you know, we'll continue to do our job. We have to tell the American people what we have been doing to galvanize them for next year, because next year is the first year of the rest of our lives. All right. Well, Congressman, uh, let's talk about uh, another issue, uh, talk about desperately needed support. Uh, we want you to weigh in on the migrant crisis here uh, in New York. Asylum seekers camped out on the sidewalks. New York running out of room. They say they need help. What's it going to take for the federal government to step in? Well, we had a, re a meeting recently uh, with leader Jeffries and others uh, imploring the Biden administration to do more as it relates to migrants here in New York. And by do more, we are very specific. We need to waive the 180-day grace period to get the migrants the work visas they need so that they can begin to work legally. That is key. We also need the resources that are uh, required to New York State so that we can provide housing and health care to the migrants as they are arriving. We also need to make sure our education systems uh, are whole to receive the children that are going to be coming in. And then finally, uh, we are calling on the administration to uh, bring uh, judges here to Westchester County to help expedite the process, the processing of the asylum seekers receiving the documentation that they need. So the meeting went very well. There are going to be follow-up meetings with the administration, but the but the need is obviously urgent, and we're going to continue to push the administration to do more because, unfortunately, in Congress, you know, Republicans don't want to do more. And the last thing I'll say is this. These asylum seekers have a legal right to seek asylum in our country. A lot of people are saying, well, you know, we just want them to come here legally. They are coming here legally. Um, when they are escaping uh, horrible conditions in their country, violence, terror, and what have you, that begins a legal process. We just have to help expedite that legal process and provide the resources to do so. All right, Congressman Bowman, we thank you so much for joining us this morning on these important topics. Good to see you all. Thank you so much.